this such an hour as this in your life. Don't do to amazing things in your life.
a God who's so exciting every minute, every hour, every day, every month, every year, every season. And we just cannot afford to, you know, take God for granted. So God has given something very exciting for each and every one in this church today. And I'm so excited to share that word. Let's close our eyes and look up to the Lord. Thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that your grace is sufficient for us. Your strength is made perfect in all our weakness. You are the God who lifts all those who are bowed down. You exalt the King. You are the God who speaks into a situation that is not existing now. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to talk to everybody in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord speak to each and every one here. Do you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ can come into a place and interfere in what's going on. Do you believe that the Lord can interfere in circumstances, interfere in people's lives, in our decisions, in our circumstances? Yes. God does interfere. You are at a place of interference. Hallelujah. 
you would have already seen the topic. Can anyone tell what the topic is? Refined silver, that's right. Refined silver. We have known about silver. We're talking about refined silver. This month, okay, now if you don't have these cards, you can get this as, as you guys are leaving, as you people are leaving the place, you can, you can bring your, you can collect this from me. This is the month's promise card. All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia. Out of the ivory places, out of the ivory palaces, they have made thee glad. They have made thee glad. I want to tell you, there are three things here. Tusk, task, and treasure. And the very first thing that we started talking about is treasure. Okay? Three things. And there is an image of an elephant. Okay? And it says about tusk task and treasures in the elephant. Now I wanted to bring to your focus that the treasure, the treasure part of this month, we're going to meditate on the task, task and treasure, but now we're dwelling more on the treasure bit. And I have something very, very interesting to unfold to everybody here. You may have been in a season of your life where you have enjoyed the good things of this world the blessings of this world. But I'm telling you, now is the time for treasures. You don't take a diamond and keep it on your showcase, do you? Do you keep diamonds on your showcase? They're not on your showpiece. Why? Oh, what only if I had this? Let this be in the most inner closet. God sees you as a diamond, which is why he has hidden you. He has hidden you. Always treasures has a compound word. If you're an English teacher or if you're an English professor, yes, we have an HOD of the English department. And the student of uh, English and your pastor themselves, who is, who is a voice and accent trainer in English, we all put our thinking hats and see now this. Treasure always has a word to it. It's called hidden treasures because they're always hidden. They're not showcased. Hallelujah. I want to talk about something which is hidden in your life and which is coming out this season. This season. This season you're going to see it. Have you ever thought about you know, this, this topic is very interesting and all of us have gone through this topic many times. Genesis chapter 43. Let me not keep that treasure waiting a long way. I'm just going right there and I'm heading right there. Genesis chapter 43. In fact, 40, 42, okay? Let me read from verse 1. When Jacob learned that there was corn in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you just keep looking at each other? He continued, I have heard there is corn in Egypt. I'm telling you, this is a prophetic word. There is corn in Egypt. In a place where you never could have imagined there is a blessing. Hallelujah. You are not getting the point. Otherwise, you'd be excited. In a place like Egypt, nobody can ever imagine a blessing. But the first word of Genesis 43 draws us to something which is not in the natural, but is existing in the supernatural. If you see in the supernatural, you can push it to the natural. Hallelujah. It is not there in Israel, but it is there. In Egypt. I'll tell you why it is there in Egypt and not in Israel. Treasures are treasures wherever they are. Can you all tell that with me? Treasures are treasures wherever they are. However they are. Wherever. Whatever. Treasure is a treasure. You will be in for a treasure hunt period this season. You are hunting treasure. 
nobody would have thought have you have you ever thought, heard this come come across this verse in the bible which says is there any good that will come out of galilee likewise is there any good from egypt people would have thought well, let me turn your focus there and say the first word that joseph's father jacob the children are also listening very intently and i'm missing andrew so when joseph entered into egypt he has become now i'm giving a short background he's become the he's become the one in charge of the palace and the court and Jake, joseph's father jacob says why are you looking here and there when there is no food there is corn in egypt i want you to tell this word every day in your life there is corn in egypt maybe somebody warned you in that place it's not there in this place it's not there here it is not there you cannot see it god is saying i'm going to call it out i'm going to call the name of that place blessed because there is someone there who is a blessing Amen. joseph has gone he has walked a journey he was sold for silver 300 shekels i'm talking about this treasure called silver today silver means purity if you want treasure you should become the treasure hallelujah if you want treasure you should become the treasure joseph was put into the pit they wanted to kill his life and one of his brothers who had mercy on him said hey let's not kill him and have bloodshed on us let's at least sell him off when you are standing at the brim of your life when you feel people are doing whatever they want to your life and there is no one to question you no one to tell to the father the father loved joseph so much the father loved joseph so dearly but these guys were so jealous of the love of the father on Joseph. Are you able to relate your situation to something like this? But the father loved Joseph. They wanted to hide the love of the father. They wanted to finish him off because there is no better opportunity and place to finish off Joseph but to push him inside the pit. They did all drama, all drama, to make sure there was blood stain in a garment. His seven colored garment was just extraordinary. The seven gifts, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, fortitude, counsel, might, the fear of the Lord. Everything was packed inside of Joseph. He was hunted because he was a treasure. Come on, welcome to the treasure hunt of the season. He was hunted down because he was a treasure. And the silver so fascinates me. I want to tell you, I'm going to hurry into this because I'm so excited to be preaching this message today. So it says, he continued, I've heard there is corn in Egypt. Go down there. The two times that he says, I've heard there is corn in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us so that we may live and not die. The 10 of Joseph's brothers, because they minus him now, okay? The 10 of Joseph's brothers went down to buy corn from Egypt. But Jacob did not send Benjamin, Joseph's brother, with the others because he was afraid and that harm might come to him. So Israel's sons were among those who went to buy corn, for the famine was in the land of Canaan also. Now Joseph, now if you remember, Canaan was the promised land. It's supposed to be flowing with milk and honey. When the blessing is taken away from a place, that place comes in need. When a blessing leaves a place, that place becomes minus the blessing. Everything minus the blessing. Wealth is very different from blessing, let me tell you. Wealth can mean money, but blessing is not always money. Blessing is 
happiness and joy with what you have. Do you want to be wealthy? Do you want to be blessed? Wealthy can also be a wicked loot. But a blessing is always righteous. And can I tell you something? The Bible says, the Bible says, justice and righteousness are the very habitation of his throne. When God sees from his throne, everything that he sees is through, he filters it through justice and righteousness. So the other things can just come to an assumption that nothing else comes into his lens if there is no righteousness in it. If people have done harm to you, if people have dejected your spirit, rejected you, avoided you, pushed you down, hunted you down, this is the time the Lord wants to tell you it all happened because he sees you as a treasure. He sees you as a treasure. And you are just in time to be hunted in the royal palaces. Hallelujah. You're not going to a hut anymore. You are going to palaces. God is lifting people with wisdom. And, I, and as I was reading the book of Proverbs, the Lord always, you know, turn with me to this verse. Proverbs. Two, verse 4. You can read Proverbs 2, 1 to 4. If somebody has taken that. My son, if you have put my word and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, and if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it for silver, For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding comes from God. And what is hidden silver compared to? Wisdom. Did Joseph have wisdom or not? He is the treasure that was hunted now. Wisdom. Wisdom. God purifies silver so that when it is seen it will not be seen as silver it will be seen as pure wisdom hallelujah when silver is purified it is seven times purified the bible says like silver seven times purified let me tell you if you look if you go back home and if you want to create interest in reading the bible you should turn with me from, from if you can go from genesis when you go back home, you can go, go back home and, 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 you know, do this. From Genesis up to King Solomon, you will notice that it was always silver that was pricey. For everything, they sold silver. And let me tell you, they have weighing measures in the sanctuary, which the, the unit of weight is called a shekel. So they would weigh everything based on shekels of silver. When Abraham wanted to give, when he wanted to give his tithe, when he built an altar, when he gave gifts, everything, he was the wealthy man. The first thing that comes in the treasure was Abraham was a wealthy man with so much of silver. Because silver was considered to be the most wealthiest treasure in the Old Testament. Until King Solomon came, listen to this. Until Solomon, son of David, took kingship, the reason gold came over silver was because he chose wisdom from the Lord and not riches. Hallelujah. When he asked wisdom, God gave the greatest treasure to replace silver. Then gold came in. Kings signed contracts with him. Ships of Tarshish used to come once in every three months, bringing all the valuable things, bringing gold, bringing all the things that you could ever imagine to be constructed. And you know what King Solomon said? He said, I have done all I had 
I gave everything. I measured everything to make sure there's a golden altar, a golden palace. Everything, all its inner rims are covered with gold. He brought people. He said, bring all the gold and let us construct the temple of the Lord. In the Old Testament, gold lost its luster and value because Moses on the top of the mountain was told by God, go down Moses, it's long enough that you're here because go and see your people, they're already building a golden calf. They're already building a golden calf. I want you to stay in my presence, but there down are people building golden calves. And who is ministering there? Aaron is leading the crowd. Exchange of things. The Lord wants us to know what is the treasure. The treasure is wisdom. The whole of the books of Proverbs say that silver is compared to wisdom. Buy gold and buy silver for your knowledge. And the next verse says, thou shall, it, it says, if you seek it's, it like silver, and search it like hidden treasure. Make a note of that. Seek it like silver, search it like hidden treasure. When you seek, seek it like silver. When you search, search it like a treasure that is missing. You will not go to sleep if you bought, say, a new device, a new Apple iPhone, and you're not able to connect it. You're not going to sleep. You're going to go on the YouTube, you're going to see whatever you can possible to get that connected. You want to make sure the device is connected and you are connected to the device. Because technology demands. And you're right there. But what are the things that you seek? And what are the things that you get? Go back with me to Genesis chapter 33. Sorry, 43. 42, I'm reading. 42 verse 5. So now, so Israel's sons were among those who went to buy corn for the famine in the land was in the land of Canaan also. Now Joseph was the governor of the land, the one who sold corn to all its people. Now see the key and the lock. There is famine in the whole land of Canaan. I want to tell you something which you might not have meditated in your personal meditation, but this will be food for thought. The time that Joseph went there to Canaan was very important. He goes into the purview of Pharaoh. Pharaoh gets a dream as soon as Joseph goes there. He immediately did not go to the palace. He goes there. He was accused by Potiphar. And then he was thrown into the prison. In the prison, the cupbearer has a dream. Pharaoh's dreams are being interpreted. How do you think one can ever interpret dreams? It's a spirit of wisdom. It's a spirit of knowledge. The spirit of the Lord was on Joseph. And he was able to interpret the dream. You know what the dream was? That dream was, it was more for Joseph than for the king. Let me tell you, because he said, seven years of famine and seven years of abundance, it was the time that was given to Joseph to make everything ready for the whole tribe of Israel that is going to come. Amen. He was interpreting the king's dream, but that dream was an alert, awake call, and a vigilant call for the whole of Israel. Now imagine this word, Israel in Egypt. Because the blessing, Joseph is in Egypt. Israel never goes to Egypt. Israel and Egypt are two different things. This is blessing, this is non-blessing. But a portion of the land, he took over the palace. He was the governor. And he had to go through a very, very shabby scene. My dear friends who are listening to this message, don't just be pondering over the palace, his interpretation and everything. Think about the start. He was sold. Okay? I want to take, I want to take you to that place which says, 
in Genesis chapter 37. Verse 12. Now his brothers had gone to graze their flocks, their father's flocks near Shechem. And remember that word Shechem, okay? And Israel said to Joseph, as you know, Israel means Jacob. Israel said to Joseph, as you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to them, go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, what are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? My dear friends, this was a sincere search for the brothers. Love, pure love, to go and report to their father how their brothers were, to convey the message. But this was just a good plan. On the other side was a plot. A plan is different from a plot. Plot is not good. Plan can be good and bad. They had good plans, the father and Joseph. But, the, but Joseph's brothers are waiting with a plot to finish him off. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance and before he reached them, they plotted. I didn't even arrive to this verse, neither did I see it. But already this came in my mind with the reasoning that it is a plot. Okay, they plotted, what is that word? Yes, but they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer. They said, you know, why dreamer? Because in Genesis 37, verse five, it says Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of corn out in the field. Remember that word corn. We were binding sheaves of corn out in the field. <laughs> God is great. He's awesome. He's surprising. When suddenly my sheep rose, all of you say that, my sheep rose and stood upright. Say that. Are you afraid to say this? I literally kept this in my ears to see whether I'm saying that. My sheep rose and stood upright. That's the blessing of everyone who's spoken that in life. This is the only word that triggered the brothers. First thing is that he had a multicolored robe made out of pure love from the father. The second thing is that he dreamed and dreamed and dreamed. And what all he's going to dream in Pharaoh's court. This was the first of the dreams. It set and shattered the brothers. They said, you should finish this guy off. He and his corn and his sheaves. They never knew one day their father would say, brothers, there is corn in Egypt. Why is corn in Egypt? The dream came true. Hallelujah. This is the fulfillment time of your life. You had a dream. God is going to fulfill that dream. You had a dream and people said, oh, something like that does not exist. You had a dream and people said, no, that is not practical. You had a dream and someone said, oh, let's see if that comes to pass. You had a dream and someone said, oh, there's nowhere close to reality. Shut up your brain and sit there. God is saying, I'm causing you. I'm taking you to a higher pedestal. I'm taking you to a higher pedestal where you will see and others will see that the dream comes true. Where you will see and others will see that the dream comes true. If it comes true in your home, only your sister and your brother and your husband and your wife and your children will know. But if you are promoted to a palace, the whole world will know. 
God is doing something amazing there. And he said, they rule us. Huh. They were almost giving a prophecy to Joseph. Welcome those prophecies. Welcome those prophecies. You're going to rule over us? You're going to reign over us? Your corn is going to stand? Your sheep is going to stand over all of us? They hated him all the more. The Bible says, and they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he said. If you have a good thing inside of you, if you have a seed inside of you, that seed will disturb many people. Because when the seed is harvested, many are going to enjoy. And the devil does not like you to enjoy the fruit of your work. So, if you are going to be pushed inside the pit or the prison, the dungeon, or sold by your brothers, when you feel in the pit there's no one to rescue, among my brothers, all of you hate me, not even one can save me from this. Do all of you really hate me so much? Sometimes you wake up to such things in life where you feel, oh, this person is also not good, that person is also not good, They're not a good friend, this is also not a good friend, not trustworthy. Who is there for me? To whom can I share this? To whom can I talk? Wait, wait, don't talk it. God is going to take you to the place where you will talk and it will manifest. Don't talk that. God talk for you. He's going to take you to the palace. You can talk and talk and talk. Talk to the king. Interpret for him. Be, a, be in, the, in the highest place. You can keep on talking. Yours will be the talk of the town. You will be the talk of the town. Hallelujah. This is for somebody. If you're not receiving that one, I'm ready to receive and keep it. The Lord's heart is so purposed in promoting you to purview of everyone. And he causes perfection to occur. And he said, then he had another dream. And he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time, the sun and the moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. Finished. They thought, Joseph, first of all, your royal robe, your, your multicolor robe is irritating us. Second thing is that you have, we left you, you came to this place, you came to the place where we were grazing. You have come to tell us that, you know, there are, there's so much corn and your sheep is standing upright and that we are all bowing down before you. And now you say there are 11 stars and all the stars bow down to you. You are a liar, man. You deserve to be killed. Have you had crazy desires in your life? Have you ever had crazy desires in your life and felt, what if, what if I got this? What if all in a sudden this happened? In the name of Jesus Christ, according to the will of God, let your heart's desire Granted, be granted to you even now. Let it begin to manifest here and now in Jesus' name. Let it begin to manifest here and now with all humility, Lord, as your servant, I declare this word over your people. Let them receive the miracle. Let them receive all the what-ifs be resoluted in the name of Jesus. You are receiving a solution. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Even Israel rebuked him. Sometimes father, mother, brothers, sisters, all in one gang, you don't know what to do. What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I, for him it was, will your mother and I, for the brothers it was, will I come and bow down, will all of us come and bow down? Now, father has a different story. Will your mother and I come and bow down before you? Hello. Will your mother and I come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flock near Shechem, and Israel said to him, as you know, brothers are grazing the flocks, and then we go right there to 19. 
18, but they saw him in the distance and before he reached them, they plotted, they saw, ah, this guy is coming here. This is the best place because he is the birthing place of so many sheaves bowing down to him. He is the blessing of so many stars bowing down to him and he is alone. Let's finish him off. Let's kill him. At a distance they plotted. Here comes the dreamer. They said to each other, come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of those cisterns and say <laughs> that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. People want to devour you, destroy you, bury your dreams, desires. But the Lord is saying, enough of it. And then when Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into the cistern here in the desert, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him off his robe. That was the only thing that was catching their eyes. The richly ornamented robe he was wearing. So according to me, Joseph was already king in his house. Sometimes you are a treasure, but you have to go to the place where you will be. You will become the treasure. When you are allowed to behave the treasure that is inside of you. He was still a treasure in Israel, but because the blessing was seen as an object of jealousy by people. Jealousy always kills the blessing. He was seen as an object of jealousy in Israel by his brothers. His wisdom was profound. His wisdom was profound. He could understand everything. He was very point blank and said, this is what I saw in my dream. He didn't even try to put it in different words. He didn't want it to sound real. He wanted it to just be what it is. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life. Don't shed. Don't shed blood. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into the cistern here in the desert, but no, don't lay a hand on him. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him off the robe, his robe, the richly ornamented robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up. Hmm. Come on, River of God Church. There's something that is coming there. They looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels, their camels were loaded with, what are the treasures? Spices, balm, and myrrh. Does this come in alignment to what you heard last week and to the promised word? 2023. Here at the river of God, the camels are coming. Get ready. They are bringing the spices. They are bringing all the good. The caravans are coming. The camels are coming. They are bringing all the treasures. You know where they were going? Stand. I'm, I'm just speaking this revelation now as God is showing this to me. The camels are coming. The brothers who had no wisdom were not even bothered about the camels. They just wanted to get rid of Joseph. They wanted to get rid of the blessing. But you know where they were going? They were going to the place where Joseph was going. Hallelujah. The camels were going to the place where Joseph was going. Joseph was already accompanied by the rich treasures. He was going with treasures into the palace. Hallelujah. The camels are coming. The camels don't think that you should be in the richest robe. The robe was stripped away. He was almost with bloodshed. They, they had almost done that. Had done drama to him. He was sold for treasures. He was sold. And, and then the, the word says, that's where I want to come. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh. Those are the things we saw last week. And they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Now you know why there is corn in Egypt?
took us. Joseph is an agent. Tell your name. Because, because you're also not bold enough to say. Say your name loudly. Let everyone hear that. Because. Because. Because you are there. Not because of the blessing of Egypt. As soon as he went there, it says, the Bible says, Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelite <laughs> and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him out of Egypt. I wanted to notice this treasure. They sold him out for 20 shekels of silver. 20 shekels of silver. The message starts now. Another 15 minutes is going to be exciting. 20 shekels of silver. This treasure, silver that we're going to meditate. The silver, you see why Joseph is normally co considered in the business realms as Joseph, you know, as people talk about him as a business place, marketplace leader. You know why? Trade. It began. It began right from the time he was sold. His mind was operating in the treasures that he was sold for. His wisdom. There was nothing left for him. He didn't take anything of Israel from there. He went empty-handed. Israel is supposed to be the blessing. He got nothing from Israel. Tell that. He got nothing from Israel. He got nothing from Israel. Everything came out of him, Joseph, because he was in Egypt. He got nothing from Israel. He got nothing from Israel. He gave everything to Israel. Hallelujah. Nothing. Zero. Even the robe that he was wearing was stripped off. Nothing. When God brings you to nothingness, sometimes he's shaking off things that should not be. And he's making you to be everything that you should be. He's just shaking it off. He's shaking it off. Allow the process. Allow the process. So when the Midianite merchants came by, Brothers pulled Joseph out of the cistern. First, they wanted to finish him off in the cistern. Then they thought one of them had some mercy because God already knew he was seeing. When he gave Joseph the dream of the sheaves bowing down before him, God already saw Joseph in the palace. God is already seeing where you are. All your days are ordained by him. God knows when you're going through an issue, he just wants you to hold on. I was sharing this with this uh, family, Gibson family yesterday. This one beautiful thing that, you know, was a highlight. You know, I was, I was reading this. A dog was set a trap. Okay, so there was a snare in the feet of the dog. Because it was very irritating in the street. So a man set a trap for a dog. So the dog's feet and the toes were caught into the trap. Like you set the trap for a mouse, it was caught in the trap. And the dog was, he was writhing in pain and it was so, so painful for the dog. The dog tried everything it could, it shouted, it howled, it cried, it was in anguish. This man found it disturbing, which is why he put it on a trap. Then what happened, it was, the trap was almost so sharp, it was getting into the flesh of the dog, was going through the flesh of the dog, and was just, you know, just there, right there. It, it's going to cut the toe. It's going to cut the toe. It's just going to remain. You know, what is going to be left is just that little portion of the feet. The dog could not bear anymore. The dog The man who kept this track was even more disturbed. He came and he killed the dog. And after that, when they saw the dog, 
it was just one inch closer for the dog itself to have removed itself from the place because one more minute of that pain that the dog could have been set free because only the remaining portion that was pending there was just a small part of the flesh. If that was gone, it, only the flesh would have gone, the dog would have not died. It would have set itself free. Are you, in a moment of your life, just at the brim of the breakthrough and you're crying loudly, don't be whining and complaining. If you have tolerated it all these years, God is going to do a breakthrough for you. The breakthrough is through you. Hallelujah. The breakthrough is through you. You will be alive. You will see. You will be alive. You belong to the land of the living and not of the dead. You will live and you shall not die. You will prosper. You will not die in that land. God wants to take you to the next level. As they sat down, and then, and then it said, 26, 27, Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands. After all, he's our brother, our own flesh and blood. So when the Midianites merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him out to Egypt, who took him to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the cistern and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, The boy isn't there. Where can I turn now? Because he is responsible to go and tell his father about Joseph. Then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, dipped the robe in the blood. They took the ornamented robe back to his father and said, we found this, examine it to see whether it is your son's robe. Now, we're moving to the next, because I wanted to take your focus to the 20 shekels of silver, okay? And here in Genesis chapter 40, 40. was one. Sometime later, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their master, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officials, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, in the same prison where Joseph was confined. Now, Joseph is in the prison because of Potiphar. Now, from the pit, he went to the prison, and now in the prison, there is a cupbearer and the baker there. And they had been in custody for some time. Each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were being held in prison, had a dream that same night. And each dream had a meaning of its own. When Joseph came to them the next morning, he saw that they were dejected. So he asked Pharaoh's officials who were in custody with him in his master's house, why are your faces so sad today? We both had dreams. They answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to the Lord? Hallelujah. Do not interpretations belong to the Lord? Tell me your dreams. So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream. He said to him, In my dream, I saw a vine in front of me, and on the vine were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and put the cup in his hand. This is what it means, Joseph said to them. The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift your head and restore you to the position, and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand, just as you used to when you were his cupbearer. But when all this goes well with you, remember me and show me kindness. Mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. See, Joseph got all the help he, want, he wanted through the wisdom of the Lord. Hallelujah. God gave him wisdom to interpret dreams. He did not have money. He did not have fame. He was a loner in that land. But God gave him wisdom to interpret the dream of the cupbearer. And all those things were lining up for Joseph's hierarchy in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Everything God was telling him, be ready. Your turn is coming. These guys, and he told him, if you are kind to me and you mention that I have interpreted your dreams, if you say something good of me, then you will receive this. Sometimes what happens is people miss that part. They miss the mention. 
mention the blessing, mention the situation, mention who did that? Whom did God use? God uses people. God has not created angels on earth. God has created people on earth. Mention, mention them. When things happen, mention them. God deserves the glory. God has kept a name to each one. God exalts people. God has put them in position that they will do the role and the things that they're supposed to do. They will operate in their gifts and their callings. Mention. He told him, mention my name. And listen what happened. This is what it says. Joseph said that three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head and hang you on a tree and the birds will eat away your flesh. So all these happen and the verse 23 says, the chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. So his continuing in the prison lasted a little longer until Pharaoh has a dream. When two year, full years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. Because of lack of mention, his time was delayed. But now, the attention is shifting from just a cupbearer to Pharaoh himself. The case is going higher. Hallelujah. The altitude is going higher. Someone at a lower position did not know that. Now, the case is in a higher platform. Nobody can hide you. Nobody can just cover you nobody can dim you you will come to the right place at the right time with the right people in the right kingdom the right season the right minute there are so many things in our lives we think if i had done this in my college if i did this person really if my father had the money he would have done that but someone did this to my father if my mother had this she would have done this to me if only i had a mother if i had a father Escalated now in Jesus name the escalation is going many times higher it is escalated the issue is escalated and if it is escalated it will be expedited if the matter is escalated it will be expedited and he said when two full years had passed Pharaoh had a dream 41 he was standing by the Nile when out of the river there came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed among the reeds. And after them, seven other cows, ugly and gone, come out of the Nile and stood beside on the riverbank. Let's look at the interpretation of that. So, uh, in verse 8, in the morning his mind was troubled, so he sent for all the magicians and wise, look at that word, wise men of Egypt. See? The criteria, the criteria in Egypt was there were lots of sorcerers, there were lots of people who were divinators, who did divination, witchcraft, and sorcery. But in Israel, there were prophets. You see the difference? There were prophets, and here there were magicians. That is why when Moses went there, God had him, do not forget your staff, do not forget your rod, because they would believe their mind, their mind has a reasoning of magic. God approaches people by what they can comprehend. Their mind receives magic better than miracles. For God, he was doing miracles through Moses. But in Egypt, people thought it was a magic. And they also brought out their rods. They wanted to do magic. There came a point when God said, magic is magic and miracles are miracles. Welcome to the season of miracles in your life. Hallelujah. His rod swallowed all other rods. His rod, other, other rods could not do the things that Moses could do. God brought the staff to say them, a hey, magic is this man, but miracle is different. Oh, just some, um, some mindset sister. Some, I'm having a kind of a, a good vibration. Ah, I hear this word from many people. As, as, as you come inside the room, that's good vibration. They don't know it's the presence of God. 
an aura, an aroma. People name resorts and, and, and stuff like that with many names to attract people, but nothing, nothing can give you the pleasure of fellowshipping with saints on a Sunday. And then it says, the interpretation goes there. In the morning, his mind was troubled, so he sent for all the magicians and wise men of Egypt. He needed somebody who is wise. And there is our man, a wise man, who was traded for silver. Hence, the treasure of silver. Hallelujah. He was sold for 20 shekels of silver. And there in Egypt, they are on a hunt for someone who is wise. Someone who is wise. This wise man was sold for silver to Egypt. In all of Egypt, there was no wise man like our man Joseph. Sold for silver, he was the treasure that Egypt could have ever had. Hallelujah. The treasures the brothers took here, he was the treasure. Amen. Amen. The brothers took the treasure. They sold him for silver, which means they took the money. But Joseph came to Egypt. Do you want the money or Joseph? Do you want the money or the blessing? This is the difference between the money and the blessing. The blessing came to the wrong place at the right time. The right people had to come to the wrong place at the right time. Intervention, interferences. God does interfere with people. God does interfere with situations. And then it says, I had a dream. So Pharaoh said to Joseph, verse 15, I had a dream. And before that, in 8, in the morning his mind was troubled. Pharaoh told him his dreams, but no one could interpret them. Verse 9, Genesis 41, 9. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, Today, I'm reminded of my shortcoming. You know why? The cupbearer is supposed to search the wisest man in the world in, in Egypt to interpret the dream that Pharaoh had. Two years later, he remembers when I was in prison, there was this guy called Joseph who interpreted the dreams. And he said, I remember my shortcomings. Pharaoh was once angry with his servant and he imprisoned me and the ship baker in the house of the captain of the guard. Each of us had a dream that same night and each dream had a meaning of its own. Now a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams and he interpreted them for us, giving each man the interpretation of his dream. And things turned out exactly as he interpreted them to us. I was restored to my position and the other man was hanged. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. Tell all of all of you say that he was quickly brought out from the dungeon quickly brought out from the dungeon your lives you're quickly being brought out from the dungeon because you are hunted for the silver that you are for the treasure that you are they are hunting tell that they are hunting the hunting has begun they are going to hunt you down they're going to take you because wisdom is equal to the treasure of silver all they needed was wisdom. They needed one wise man. They never saw any other criteria. Whose father's father's grandfather's grandfather? Not the big, big, big names. They said, who is the man that is wise that can interpret the dream? Because when the mind goes mad, you need someone to settle that down. Only Jesus Christ and his wisdom can do that. Hallelujah. People are finding the people who are wise with the treasures of God in them. You are being searched out. Search them like silver. Seek them like silver. Search them like treasures. Egypt was searching and seeking. They got Joseph. These guys were dejecting and rejecting. They lost Joseph. Israel received the wisdom of God. Egypt received the wisdom of God through Joseph. And now interpretations are happening there. And, and it says in verse 14, So Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. When he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph, 
I had a dream and no one can interpret, but I've heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to him, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. Amen. Amen. That again is wisdom. Silver. 20 shekels? No, I don't want. 50 shekels? 100 shekels? Oh, wisdom is pure, seven times purer. Many, many shekels that the world cannot buy. He said, wisdom made him tell, I cannot interpret, but God will give the heart of Pharaoh's desires come to pass. And then, you know what happened? It said, let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land. Hmm. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land. This story includes Joseph in it. The dream already included Joseph in it. To take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. Yeah, before that, verse, verse 20, 28, 41, 28. It is just as I said to Pharaoh, God has shown Pharaoh what he's about to do. Seven years of great abundance are coming throughout the land of Egypt, but seven years of famine will follow them. Then all the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten and the famine will ravage the land. The abundance in the land will not be remembered because the famine that follows it will be so severe. The reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is that the matter has been firmly decided by God and God will do it soon. See, the time that Joseph went into the palace was the right time. God gave him the dream about what is going to happen in the land. He said, oh, welcome Joseph to the seven years of abundance. Here, you will be gaining all the grains. You will be gaining all the grains for the next seven years of famine. See, the dreams of others involved Joseph in it, whether they knew it or not. The other people who had dreams, it involved Joseph in it. Joseph was... He was going to go to that position. Now this abundance and this famine was all related to Joseph. But who is getting this dream? Pharaoh is getting the dream. In whose heart did the Lord speak? To Joseph. To interpret the dream. And he said, abundance is coming. But that abundance will not be remote because following it is a great famine in the land. The great reset. Hallelujah. The great reset. And he said, this food should be held in reserve for the country when he said that in 36 he never knew that he's going to be appointed to rule the reserves hallelujah you are called to rule the reserves in the time of utter famine and devastation in the land you are called to rule the reserves you are called to reign in the land and then what happened is they should collect all the food of these years that are coming and store up the corn under the authority of Pharaoh to keep in the cities for food. This food, this food should be held in reserve for the country to be used during the seven years of famine that will come upon Egypt so that the country may not be ruined by the famine. The plan seemed good to Pharaoh and to all his officials. So Pharaoh asked them, can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the spirit of God? That's the spirit of wisdom. That's why Proverbs says, Get wisdom, get understanding, get knowledge. With everything, after you've done everything, get wisdom. Solomon asked for wisdom, but Joseph displayed wisdom. Hallelujah. And both of them seem to have treasures. Joseph, his treasure was silver. So much so that he put his own silver cup in the sack of Benjamin. But for King Solomon, it was all replaced with gold because he verbalized it and said, Father God, I need wisdom. With wisdom, knowledge, and understanding came gold and silver and treasures. If you are there for a treasure hunt, ask God for wisdom. Go to the place where you can seek him. Seek him like silver. Search him out like treasures. Refined means, I will come to that the next week. It is going through all these. Now, what was going on in the dungeon? What was going on in the prison? What was going on in the pit? He was becoming refined silver so that his wisdom could be used. His wisdom, they were, used, they were doing trade with Joseph. They were doing business. They were doing the whole destiny of the land of Egypt 
was in the hand and the wisdom of Joseph. He was ruling and reigning over all the reserves of that particular land and city. And it said, this fort should be held in reserve for the country. And then you see, as he flipped through very quick in, in Genesis chapter 42, That's where I started. The ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy corn from Egypt, right? And so I'm, I'm quickly reading that. Genesis 42, verse 3. The ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy corn from Egypt. Now, fast forward, okay? They go in there. But Jacob did not send Benjamin, Joseph's brother, because Joseph was already lost. So he did not want to send his own brother to all its people. Hallelujah. The one who sold that corn to all his people. His dream was coming true. So when Joseph's brothers arrived, they bowed onto the ground with their faces to the ground. As soon as Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them. But the ones who wanted to kill him thought he's, he's done and dusted. They could not recognize. But he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. Where do you come from? He asked from the land of Cain and they replied to buy food. Although Joseph recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. Then he remembered his dream about them and said to them, You are spies. You have come to see where our land is unprotected. No, my lord, they answered. Your servants have come to buy food. We are all the sons of one man. Your servants are honest men, not spies. And then all of this happens. And then, but they replied, Your servants were 12 brothers, the sons of one who lives in the land of Canaan. The youngest is now with our father and one is no more. Joseph said to them, it is just as I told you, you are spies. And this is how you will be tested. As surely as Pharaoh's lives, again, wisdom for Joseph. You will not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Because they were sons of one mother to Jacob. One mother, okay. And send one of your number to get your brother. The rest of you, the rest of you will be kept in prison so that your words may be tested to see if you're telling the truth. If you're not, then you surely, as Pharaoh's lives, you are, uh, lives, you are spies. And he put them all in custody for three days. Now he was known for custody because he has been under custody. He brought the brothers under three days of custody. On the third day, Joseph said to them, do this and you will live for I fear God. If you're honest men, let one of your brothers stay here in prison while the rest of you go and take corn back for your starving households. Take the corn back for your starving households. He was who his dream told he would be because it came from God. And God gave him the wisdom ahead of time. But you must bring your youngest brother to me because he wanted to see Benjamin. So that your words may be verified and that you may not die. This they proceeded to do. And all this happened. And um, Joseph gave orders in verse 25. Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with corn. Now, like I said, the corn was there. They filled it with corn to put each man's silver back in his sack. All of you say that word, back in his sack. Joseph said, see, I don't want your silver. The corn that I came here to prepare was a reserve that cannot be met with the demands of silver that you're carrying from wherever you're coming. I don't want that silver, he said. He told the people who were in charge of the sacks, he said, give them grain, give them back their silver. I don't want that silver. Give it back to them. So these guys, Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with corn to put each man's silver back. His hands were pure. He did not want to get that silver back. I'm talking about a silver treasure which is not to be faded with lack of wisdom. He used wisdom. He got silver in a different way. He never, though he was selling all the food resources, he did not want to take them. He did not want to give them for the silver with which they were coming to buy. Because he had a lesson to teach them. He said, he turned them away. And at the place, they loaded their corn on their donkeys and left. At the place, 27, where they stopped for the night, one of them opened his sack to get feed for his donkey, and he saw his silver in the mouth of his sack. Listen to this word, verse 28. My silver has been returned, he said to his brothers. Here it is in my sack. I'm telling you to observe this because I'm coming to tell something very important. My silver is being returned. It is in my sack. 
there is a time to give there is a place to give there is a person to give there is a time frame joseph has gone to a level where this giving does not mean anything come on simply promise and not give they never give he came to that place where they thought we are going to buy silver joseph said shut up and sit your silver is not what i am here for i am the governor of this whole land the whole land needs food sometimes the men of god and the people who operate in the wisdom of god are taken so lightly for things like this silver and gold and money god values the wisdom that he has put in the people of god in the servants of god look at the wisdom that flows from there treasure that do you need a treasure hunt do you know the value of treasure that is put inside of a man of god a woman of god the treasure he said take back and he said joseph gave orders at the place where they stopped they found this and they were scared my silver has been returned their hearts sank and they turned to each other trembling and said what is this that god has done to us then they came to their father jacob in the land of canaan they told all of this and as they were emptying their sacks verse 35 there in each man's sack was his pouch of silver when they and their father saw the money pouches they were frightened because that money pouch of silver was supposed to go to joseph but it was all returned to them it was all returned to them and they also got grain they also got corn you never know at what part of your life who will be at the giving end and who will be at the receiving end things are changing hallelujah it calls for wisdom things are changing if you are at only at the receiving end the lord is saying i am causing you to give if you're only at the giving end the lord is saying i'm opening your hands to receive God is going to do there's going to be a mismatch controversy heaven and earth are meeting together for an interference in your life divine destinies are opening up there is silver in the sack there is treasure that treasure that you thought is a treasure is your treasure your treasure is not my treasure my treasure is wisdom don't bring your money to get this for that you'll be planning this week and next week and after that it will never happen your treasure is silver joseph's treasure is wisdom plan and plan and plan and rot there in the plot and then it said then judah said to his uh, then it goes this this keeps going and he comes back in 43 genesis chapter 43 verse 11 then their father israel said to them if it must be then do this because you all have silver in your bags return put some of the best products of the land in your bags and take them down to the man as a gift a little balm and a little honey some spices and myrrh some pistachio nuts and almonds take double the amount of silver with you hallelujah take double for the trouble take double for the trouble take the double amount of silver with you for you must return that silver that was put back into the mouths of your sacks perhaps it was a mistake perhaps it was a mistake you should have received you should have given that silver there take your brother also and go back to the man at once and the man did that joseph told him and took the men to joseph's house verse 17 19 so they went up to joseph's steward and spoke to him at the entrance to the house please sir they said we came down here the first time they're narrating to buy food but at the place where we were stopped for the night we opened our sacks and each of us found his silver the exact weight in the mouth of his sack so we have brought it back with us we have also brought additional silver with us to buy food we don't know who put our silver in our sacks this is the time of the return of the lord return god is saying good man in a good way evil people in an evil way 
Take it back. I don't want, says the Lord. Take it back. Because the time is not right. The hearts are not right. And he said, they are two. We don't know who put our silver in our sacks. It's all right, he said. Don't be afraid. Your God, the God of your father. I'm wrapping up two minutes. Your God, the God of your father, has given you, hallelujah, treasure in your sacks. I received your silver. Here, the word says, this is the catch here. This is the crux of this message. If, if you listen to this, you will understand the message where I'm trying to weave the thread as the Holy Spirit leads me. In Genesis 42, we see, 42, 28, the word says, my silver has been returned. In Genesis 43, verse 23, the word says, I received your silver. It is returned, here it is received. It is returned, here it is received. Church, what happened in between? It was exchanged. He said, I have received your silver. But did he take the silver? He did not take the silver. He said, it's all right. He said, don't be afraid. Your God, the God of your father, has given you treasure in your sacks. I received your silver. I took back what I wanted. He said, this is meant, this silver is meant to be given to you by God himself. Take it back. There they said it has been returned to us. Here he said, I have received. Now, you know who is in the picture? God alone. It says, your God, the God of your father, has given you treasure, not returned to you, has given you treasure in your sacks. I received your silver. That means, through me, that silver has been returned to you. You have received it because I have returned it and I have received my share. God has given it to you. Weave the threads and see. God is talking something so, so beautiful, full of wisdom, full of wisdom. He said, they have returned it to us. It's missing. It's, it's here. And there they said, I have returned it. Here Joseph says, I have received it. But he did not receive the silver. He says, the God, the God of your father has returned, has given you treasures in your sack. I pray everybody will receive treasures of silver in your sacks. Come on church, let's stand up and look up to the Lord. There is a time to receive. There is a time to return. The Lord is saying, all the treasures, all the treasures of this world has an exchange process. Return and receive. Hallelujah. Receive and return. Receive and return. That is the way it always works with God and his kingdom. Let's look up to the Lord. Thank you, Father God, that you are with us, oh Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have given a good word for your children and that you are speaking to each and every one. That you have given a revelation of what a real treasure is. Seek wisdom like treasure. Search it like hidden treasures. Seek wisdom like silver and search it like hidden treasures. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are going to talk to each and every one in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you will not leave us, neither forsake us, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we want to see your presence in our lives. We want to see your presence in our lives. We surrender and submit ourselves to you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, we surrender, Lord. We have been holding too much inside of us. We want to just look at Jesus and say, Lord, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Thank you for each and every one in this place. Lord, we pray that...
Share, shake hands with your friends, tell them that God loves them.